Is everybody still flying high? <laughs> He's the president-elect of the United States again. It's so wild. It's so incredible. It's so amazing. Yet, kind of seems like everything falling into place like it was always supposed to happen this way. All right. I'm thrilled. I hope you are, too. I know you are. A lot of you, at least. Uh, what is he doing? He's standing up his government, appointed his chief of staff today. First woman to ever hold that job. We'll get to that in a little bit. Um, but it's really great. And guess what? I got to give this to the left. It's been peaceful. I mean, no riots, no burning stuff down. I mean, genuinely peaceful. It's not like, you know, not like peaceful Black Lives Matter peaceful, right? Remember when they pretended this stuff was peaceful? No, it's genuinely peaceful. Now, in 2020, they were gearing up for a Donald Trump win, and they were, <laughs> oh boy, American businesses coast to coast were, well, they were worried. What would the left do if Donald Trump won? I believe they would have rioted. They would have. They would have gone crazy. Now, mm, they're not doing it this time. I believe it's because Kamala Harris, they knew in their heart of hearts that she wasn't worthy. She just has no business being president. Let's take a look at those results. Donald Trump in the Electoral College and in the popular vote, right? Creamed her. Creamed her. But at the same time, you know, I see those pictures together. Just Drop the numbers for a second and look at this lineup. Every time I saw it, you know, on election night and the run up to the election and watching the numbers, it struck me as wrong, right? There's Donald Trump, what he's been through, what he did to get the nomination the first time, the presidency, and the nomination the second time next to her, no votes, no achievement of any kind. Yet there they are side by side, like they're on the same level. They aren't, they never were, they just, this never should have happened. And remember Ann Coulter? She's back. Oh, yeah, she's been riding away. And she's got a devastating but an accurate assessment, I believe, about Kamala Harris and how this whole fiasco happened, the vice presidency, the campaign, all of it. And it's all because of identity politics. Ann Coulter writes, no Democrat would dare suggest that Kamala was not absolutely the most qualified person for the job. I mean, just look at her, a woman and a minority. This is the crazy culture of the left right now. Harris's race and gender was how Biden got stuck with her in the first place. An amazing choice for VP, considering that she'd accused him of racism during the primary and also that she hadn't won a single vote. This is how Democrats ended up running a dingbat, her word, who cheered on the BLM riots, enthusiastically released violent criminals from prison, insisted on taxpayer-funded sex change operations for prisoners and illegal aliens, compared ICE agents to the Ku Klux Klan, completely believed the Jesse Smollett hoax hate crime, supported defunding the police, and said she wanted to decriminalize illegal immigration. Thus, Kamala is the perfect representative of today's Democratic Party. Her entire life has been one affirmative action promotion after another. She even got into law school on the basis of her, her race, as the law school has bragged. And this week, she almost made it to the top on the basis of her race and gender without doing, let alone achieving anything. Harris is not only a beneficiary, but a tragic casualty of affirmative action. The problem with liberals using intimidation tactics to bully people into staying quiet about the incompetence of DEI hires is that the only way they ever had to register an objection was in the privacy of a voting booth. And on Tuesday, boy, did they. Wow. She certainly has it, doesn't she? And that brings us to her former running mate, I guess, Joe Biden. Yeah, he, uh, he went out into public today. And he said something that uh, I think is fundamentally dishonest. Yesterday, I spoke with President-elect Trump to congratulate him on his victory. And I assured him that I'd direct my entire administration to work with his team to ensure a peaceful and orderly transition. That's what the American people deserve. Well, I don't believe him because I, we know he lied about that in 2016. The Obama administration plotted to sabotage the duly elected leader, Donald Trump, and his administration. 
They did. We have the notes. We have the records. We have the receipts. In fact, according to Peter Strzok, the vice president, then Vice President Joe Biden, floated to the group plotting to get Donald Trump. Maybe we can catch him in a Logan Act violation. Logan Act, a 300-year-old obscure rule. It was, it was get him, stop him. And they were brainstorming. And who knows what they talked about that we didn't find out about. When he was confronted on, yeah, George Stephanopoulos, he had to finally kind of admit it. So what did you know about those moves to investigate uh, Michael Flynn? And was there anything improper done? I know nothing about those moves to investigate Michael Flynn, number one. Number two, this is all about diversion. I do want to press that. You say you didn't know anything about it, but you were reported to be at a January 5th, 2017 meeting where you and the president were briefed on the FBI's plan to question Michael, Michael Flynn. No, I thought you asked me whether or not I had anything to do with him being prosecuted. Okay. I'm sorry. I, I, I was aware that there was, that there, they asked for an investigation, but that's all I know about it. One of the many times he was busted in a lie, but, you know, gets a great big pass. It's just uh, amazing. Anyway, their schemes resulted ultimately in President Trump. Yeah, in courtroom, in lockup, and on and on and on. Well, it probably helped them. It all backfired on them. Their scheme to cancel President Trump. What were they thinking? I think they thought the moment he got arrested we'd run away. We got, we'd get nervous. We'd abandon him. No, they don't understand MAGA and they don't understand Trump. And certain public officials still don't get it. Letitia James, very peculiar figure. In her off-duty time, she likes to go to drag time story hour for kids at public schools. How about that, huh? Uh, all kinds of saber rattling and tough talk. We're going to get Trump again. If he crosses us, double, we're going to, we're vigilant. We're ready to pounce. And Kathy Hochul, the governor of New York State, the same fake tough talk. If you try to harm New Yorkers or roll back their rights, I will fight you every step of the way. New Yorkers are resilient. We fought the first time around and we'll fight again. <laughs> this is in America, only in America could someone like this become the governor of what, the second or third most populous state? Just actually in October, President Trump at the Al Smith dinner and other places publicly said to these people, I will work with you. I want to work with you. I actually want to give you more money. Listen to this. Senator Gillibrand, thank you very much. Thank you very much for working hard. <laughs> governor Hochul, wherever you may be up, this is a big day, that's right. Where is the governor? Good job. It's not an easy one, is it? But you're doing all right. We have to get a little money from the federal government, I have to tell you. Yeah, I talked about how they were being shortchanged by the Biden administration. The <laughs> He wants to give more money, and they're already picking a fight. How about that, huh? Uh, and he's been consistent on this. This wasn't a, a joke or a one-off. My first week back in the Oval Office, I will clean up and call up your governor and mayors all across your state, and I will tell them it's time to work together. They're largely Democrats. It's time to work together for the good of the people. Doesn't that sound great? But they're already making noises about lawfare, continued lawfare against the president. Well, that's not going to stop him. He is going to be addressing, right, the big issues of our time. We all know what they are. Let's hit it. The open border. He's going to close that right away. What else do we have to deal with? You know, the list, crime out of control, and on and on and on. Um, we need his help. And he's ready, and he's putting together a first-class team. The people are impressive. The January Sixers, he has made that a priority. And only, only he, only him. So many Republicans wanted to forget him. And they don't want to know what really happened on that day. I think President Trump is going to find out. All right. How about the people who have been overcharged and oversentenced, you know, standing there peacefully outside an abortion clinic praying? and then finding yourself in prison? That woman sent to jail? Are you crazy? 
She's got all kinds of ailments. All she was doing was praying, sitting in a chair. They charge her with felonies. They're crazy. Help is on the way, ma'am. Help is on the way. All right, so we know the big issues. Can I show you my small list? There are a couple of little things that maybe have fallen, I don't know, people have forgotten. Those horse guys, they were totally innocent. All right, we need them restored. They were hassled by the federal government for no good reason. The media and the rest of them, them, they're going to be restored. And a few other people we need to make sure get the help they need. We'll be right back.